Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass geometry. In this video we're going to look at transversals by looking at alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, supplementary angles, and then we're going to tie them all together with an example at the end. So when two parallel lines are cut by a diagonal, this line is otherwise known as a transversal, it looks something like this. So notice line M is parallel to line N, and notice when all these lines come together, they form all these different angles that are numbered one through eight. So the cool thing about these angles is that there are several different types of congruent relationships that happen here once all these lines come together, and we're gonna look at each of them. The first one we're gonna look at is alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles just means alternate meaning the opposite and interior means we're gonna be looking over here. So the opposite and interior. So we're gonna be looking at angles three and six. These are congruent. Yeah, so these are congruent angles. So angle three is congruent, oh, angle three is congruent to angle six. And the other pair of alternate interior angles is angle five and angle four. So angle four is congruent to angle five. Yeah, so there's only two sets of alternate interior angles here, as you can see. And next, we're gonna be looking at alternate exterior angles. So same idea, but now, so we're gonna find pairs of angles that are congruent, but now they're gonna be on opposite sides and on the outside of of our line. So we're going to look over here at angle 1 and angle 8. These two are congruent to each other. So we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 8. And now the other pair of alternate exterior angles is 7 and 2. So we have angle 2 is congruent to angle 7. Yeah, so these can all be labeled something different. They could be angle B, angle A. They could also have actual angle values and they'll be equal to each other. So if like this was 50 degrees, that means this down here would also be 50 degrees. So that's really what we're figuring out here. Next we have corresponding angles. So corresponding angles are nice. There's a lot of them here. So if you notice like this, this group 1, 2, 3, 4 kind of looks like this group 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's basically all corresponding angles are. So we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Angle two is congruent to angle six. Angle three is congruent to angle seven. And then we have our last set of angles here, four and eight. The last thing we're going to look at is supplementary angles, are, which are angles that add to 180 degrees. So these aren't uh, congruent like the ones we've just been looking at. So supplementary angles are the degree measured distance within a line, which is why there's so many we find here. So seeing that we have a lot of lines here, so we know there's going to be a lot of supplementary angles. If we look at all the lines that form, so we have, you know, one and two, so along here, this is 180 degrees. So we can say angle one plus angle two is equal to 180 degrees. And then something similar happens all across this transversal here. So we have this angle three and angle four, also equal 180 degrees. And then the same goes for down here. We can do angle five plus angle six equals 180 degrees. And then seven and eight equals 180 degrees. And there, and there are other lines that can form too as well. So if you look along the transversal line this way, this is also a straight line. So this also equals 180 degrees. If we go, if we add five and seven, that would also equal 180 degrees. So we have angle five plus angle seven equals 180 degrees. And then we could do this going all around the angles. So on the other side, we have six and eight. And then up here, we could do the same thing. Angle one plus angle three, oh, that is equal sign, not a plus, equals 180 degrees. And then over here, angles two and four also equal 180 degrees. 
There's also kind of a surprise element of what equals 180 degrees and that are the interior angles added together. So these two angles added together, four and six, and these two angles added together, three and five, they both also equal 180 degrees when they're added together. So let's write those out also. So we have angle four plus angle six equals 180, and then angles three and angle five equals 180 degrees. So there's a lot of supplementary angles found within two parallel lines and a transversal. And the key to this is just understanding, you know, where the lines are and how that equals 180 degrees. And maybe to just, you know, pay close attention to these last two we just went over, those interior angles. So in case you miss anything we just went over, take a look at all of these rules we have here about parallel lines and transversals, all the different kind of congruent angles and supplementary angles that we have out there. And when you're ready, take a look at our example, which says line ABC is parallel to line DEF and BE is congruent to EF. Given that angle ABE is 105 degrees, find the value of angle EBF. So there's a lot going on here. And so we're gonna, so let's look at this and take it one step at a time. First of all, this looks a little different than what we've just been working with. We've been looking at transversals, but how do we know this is the same thing we're dealing with? Because it has like this extra line and it has like all these dots, what's going on here? The way we know that this is a transversal is right away it says line ABC is parallel to DEF. If we have two parallel lines, ABC and DEF, and then we have another line cutting through it, we've got a transversal with all those congruent angle relationships we just went over. So we know, we know what we're working with. And the next part of this says, BE is congruent to EF. So let's find BE and EF and mark them congruent to each other on our diagram. So this will come in handy later. They also gave us that ABE is equal to 105 degrees. So we have that already given to us right here. What we need to find is angle EBF. EBF is just right here. So that's we're just marking it like that's that's our goal, that's the angle we want to find. So now, think of the rules we just saw, and we see this 105 degrees. Let's just see what angles we can fill in. So right away, this looks like alternate interior angle rule, where the ant, where 105 degrees could also be written over here. Because if you take this away, this is like your regular transversal, and this is the alternate interior angle. So we know that these are going to be congruent to each other. So another thing we notice is that these two are congruent sides, B, E, and E, F. So this is really, so when you have two congruent sides, this kind of, this is an isosceles triangle, this whole thing. And when I say this whole thing, I mean triangle B, E, F. So we have this form, so, so triangle B, E, F. Just to get a clearer picture of it, let's, let's take this triangle and rotate it. So just a little rotation and get a different picture of it. A different view. So over here, so this is our vertex, we have 105 degrees. Just flipping it around a bit. And then, so this is E, and then over here we have F, and over here is B. So if we know that this is an isosceles triangle, we know that both sides are equal, and that both angles are going to be equal. So something about triangles is all the measures within a, a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we know that, we can subtract 105, which will give us 75. And then we need to divide 75 degrees that's left evenly. So we're just gonna take 75 and divide it by two, which gives us 37.5 degrees. So, so that's, that's our answer. But before, before we say that's our answer, let's see how and why. So this is over here, 37.5 degrees. And over here, 37.5 degrees, both sides of the triangle. And let's fill that in back on our diagram. So if we were to move this piece back, we'd have 37.5 degrees over here. And then this would also be 37.5 degrees. So if you look at the angle we wanted to find originally, it was angle EBF marked by the pink. And we have our answer, which is 37.5 degrees. So we have angle EBF is equal to 37.5 degrees. And that's our answer. So in case you miss anything, take a look at the solution slide right here. And if you're looking for more practice problems, just 
like this one, take a look at my blog, mathsucks.org. The link is in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Happy calculating. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating.